guidance is a way to say, where spirit's like saying, I know you're terrified, but if you can just follow me step by step, I'll unwind you very, very carefully, and I'll build your confidence in the spirit. I'll build your confidence in the guidance. I'll build your confidence in how the spirit is taking you way beyond the belief that you're a person in a world, but that you're, you are truly a divine mind that, that lives. You're an idea in the mind of God. That's who you really are. But it's going to take a lot of unwinding to get there. So the real question, and I think Nicholas brought this up at the beginning. Nicholas brought the little book out, Purpose is the Only Choice, that in really in any situation, whether it's a presidential election that seems to be happening in Mexico, which candidate do I vote for? Whether it's do I get this surgery done, or is there an alternative method, or is there something you want me to see? Is there some kind of fear that's so deep that I'm at a belief that I'm holding on to that I could release? If there's something you want to show me, Holy Spirit, then please show it to me. I want to really see it. That's the prayer of the heart. And it's not really about the election or the World Cup's going on here. We have a giant cup behind us they put as a prop. But basically, anything that's symbols in the world that helps you feel like I'm, I'm progressing, I'm opening towards God, I'm, I'm healing, I'm moving in the direction of healing, that's helpful. And anything where you place so much faith in something that's an external is, is what they called an idol. That's what was brought up on the earlier shows. That's an idol made to take the place of God. So when we pursue things, whether it's um, solving problems in the world, whether it's trying to find the perfect house, the perfect career, the perfect partner, the perfect pet, the perfect amount of money in a bank account or whatever, all those are just idols because you're literally putting faith in, I will be happy when I get that thing. That's clearly an idol. And when you go for healing, it's a loosening from the belief in idols. And you're just saying, okay, I'm afraid, but just use the symbols to reach me, somehow reach me in a way that can be helpful, in a way that I feel like I'm coming back home, I'm coming back to you, God. I've had, I remember many, many years ago, probably over 20 years ago, I went, I went to a Course in Miracles group and I was sitting in the group, it was a large group, and the facilitator was like saying, oh David, I'm so glad you're here, we'd, go, we'd love to hear from you. And, we, you know, I really want to turn the group over to you and everything. And I'm in this course group and I kept hearing from the Holy Spirit, wait. And I'm like, okay, because they're all in the room, the facilitators saying, take it away. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, wait. And I'm saying, thank you everybody. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm going to talk, talk to you about a few things, but the Spirit's like, wait, wait, wait. And I didn't know what the waiting was for. I'm ready to to go and it's like wait 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 then the door opens and a woman comes in and she's got tears in her eyes and this course study group was all about what was going to happen next with the woman who came in i was like wait wait and she had just gone come from the doctor and she'd just been diagnosed with a terminal illness she's coming to her course group she's got tears in her eyes and she walks in the door and she I could feel the whole energy shift in Jesus is like, yeah, this is what it's for. This is what the whole meeting's for. That's what the wait, wait, wait was for. And then she spoke up and she said, I'm a course student. I've been reading the book and it's telling me all the problems are in my mind and all the problems are my thoughts and beliefs. And I've just come from the doctor and he's told me I've got so long to live and I've got a terminal illness. I can't go home. I've been preaching to my kids, my husband, there is no such thing as external sickness, it's all in the mind. And I've just been diagnosed, you know, with a terminal illness. I can't even go home. I, I feel too ashamed to walk into my family's house because I feel like I'm such a terrible Course in Miracles student and everything. And she said, so the doctor said, well, here's, here's what the doctor said. I'm going to have to go through treatments and I need to go into the hospital, I need to schedule a time in the hospital for some surgery. And, and she just, everybody just sat in silence as this woman came into this course group and poured it all out. Here's what's going on for me, she said. And then after she 
for 10, 15 minutes, poured it all out, and everybody was completely quiet. She looked over at me and she said, aren't I just giving in to the ego to go in for this surgery that this doctor told me about? It goes against all the teachings, and I've been talking about this stuff for years. And I feel like a fool, and I feel embarrassed to even face my husband and my children. And I said, yes, you are to go for that hospital appointment, but you can't think of it as going in for treatment or surgery for a, an external illness, because there is no external illness. You know, the mind was sick, Jesus says, that thought the body could be sick. That's his line in the Course. The mind was sick that thought the body could be sick. It's all mental. But I said, but when you go in there, you are a light worker. You are the Holy Spirit's agent. You are to go into that hospital and you are to bless all the doctors, <laughs> all the nurses. Possible? You are, Jesus is just using this situation of what you believe it is just to go in there and shine the light. And I said, you can't think of it as you going in there as, as a victim, as somebody who's done something wrong, as somebody who doesn't get it, because how are you going to be the joy of the world? How are you going to be the light of the world if you believe that? So you go into that hospital and you keep that appointment and you, you shine your light and you don't forget the reason that you're there. Don't forget the purpose that you're there because Spirit is counting on you to be used, to allow your body to be used, to be spoken through, to be smiled through. Your holy encounters with the receptionist, with everybody at that hospital, is part of the, the script, and you're going to use it for that purpose. You can't hold on to this idea somehow that you've done something wrong. Spirit never looks at us as, as if we've done something wrong. Spirit never says, oh, that's, you know, you've done wrong, you've done... Spirit's like that GPS that even when you make turns and you're way off, it just says, make the next legal U-turn. <laughs> it doesn't go, you dummy, I just told you to turn left and you missed it. it the, the GPS never, never condemns, never criticizes, it always just goes, make the next turn or turn right. It will always bring you back on track to get to your destination. And the Holy Spirit always brings us back, never criticizes, never judges. So this is a great topic that you're bringing up because there's nothing wrong with magic. The only reason the mind would, would continue to believe in magic is because of the belief that it works. Why did Gandhi use herbs for healing for decades? Because it seemed to work. Why do people go to doctors and have surgeries for things like broken broken legs or heart surgeries or whatever? It's because what? It seems to work. They seem to come away from the doctor or from the, the nutrition center or from the, maybe they had some body energy balancing or something. It's all magical, but it, it seems to work. And then there will come a point in everybody's journey back to God where the things that seem to work in linear time, some, they start to not work anymore. That's when people really start to pay attention to their thoughts even closer. That's when they go, they look at their mind even deeper and closer when the same things that worked over and over and over magically, they don't seem to be working. And that just means that the Spirit's like saying, okay, we're ready for the next step to go into a higher level of, of consciousness and awareness. So even when those things fall apart, you're not failing. It's just that you're ready to, to start to tune into a higher level of, of consciousness, a higher frequency. So you see, it's all positive. There's nothing ever going wrong. It's all just how ready am I to go and, and take complete responsibility for my state of mind. Like Netta was sharing that example of that past life where you went back and you could feel the shame of that that girl and thinking that, that she had done something wrong, that she was responsible for that scenario, that, that abuse or that rape or whatever. And again, the Course is teaching you're not responsible for the error, you're only responsible for accepting the correction, but also it teaches you can't accept the correction until you bring it all the way back into your mind. 
there, that's the Holy Spirit saying, come back, bring it to me, hand it over to me, I will take it away. There's tremendous resistance, it's almost like saying, no, I feel too shameful, I've done something terribly wrong and it was my fault. But it's never our fault, you know, it's, it's, it, there is no sin, it's just, sin is a mistake to be correction, it's just an opportunity to choose again. It's not some kind of black mark on your soul, but the ego believes in punishment, the ego believes in personal responsibility, the ego believes something terribly was done wrong and that it can't be corrected. And the Holy Spirit doesn't even see sin. All he sees is, is opportunities for accepting the correction. Is that positive?